Hi folks, I'm down on my, my Barrows Lake this morning trying to catch a carp and I want to do it uh, using a different method. Um, it's not my idea, this isn't uh, a setup that's very well demonstrated by Matt Collins of Beausoleil and I won't go into all the details of it because he gives a very good description on his video but basically what it is is one meter of dark matter tubing and a running a running ledger all the details of how to make this rig up um, I'll add a link to it in the description I've got a five bait stringer, I've already put three five bait stringers out onto my spot which I'll show you presently and today's bait is munch baits, this is called citrus blend, these are 14 mil, basically it's pineapple, take it from me it's pineapple, if, you had smell, if we had smelly vision you could, you could see why. So that's going out at six wraps, it's a very short range spot, as I say, which I'll show you in a minute. Alright, well I hope the wind isn't too much of a problem. Um, it's blowing right in at me at the moment. My two baits are out off of that tree, just about there. It's about five or six feet of water there. And my five bait stringers, the freebies, have gone out on that spot. I've seen a fish jump twice over on the far side. That, that's a good sign because this part of the lake is a, a bowl. Uh, the rest of the lake goes way up to right there where the deep water is and where the fish spend the night but uh, currently I'm on the shallows done very well here in the past um, and I think it's the ideal place to test the, um, the new method that I'm trying this rather peculiar looking arrangement is an attempt on my part to reduce foul ups as much as possible by having a long drop there's the potential on the bobbin there's a potential for twisting and snagging and well we all know what can happen with that the, the fish will have the rod the pod and everything in the water so what I've done is kept the reel as close to the front rest in this case the bite alarm with the bobbin just hanging down a touch and I'm hoping that everything is going to tighten up. I've got the clutch set quite tightly and the reason for that is to assist in self-hooking which with the running rigs of course you, you don't get and I don't want to put a stop up the line. The, the rear rests are the Nash like gripper rod rest they actually grip the butt and you have to hold on to the buzzer bar and pull to release them but they're solid as a rock they won't um, they won't accidentally release so that's what I'm doing looks a bit weird but I'm hoping it's going to work well, things have turned a bit threatening this afternoon just had a couple of claps of thunder, I haven't seen any lightning, but um, marvellous conditions for carp fishing. Uh, I just hope I don't get a take if it's absolutely hammering down the rain. It's coming from that direction over there, so uh, we'll keep our eyes skinned and hope that uh, the conditions remain favourable but we don't absolutely get drowned. The well, fish has just jumped out, just there.
just there in front of those snags they do follow these margins um, and that's why I'm fishing down towards that spot so I'm, I'm still very hopeful of a, of a bite and this thundery weather can only be good yeah it's rumbling around isn't it and here comes the rain here we go it's raining do you know what I'm I think I'm gonna get a take I've just got a really strong feeling about this I know these feelings can often be wrong but it's oh it just feels so right at the moment Yes, the old thunders start to rumble around. Rain's coming down. God, I hope I don't get a take in this. Well, the rain stopped for the moment. We've just got a little pitter-patter stuff falling. Not really soaking wet, but I, I just feel it's so right at the moment. I'm really super confident of a take, I just don't know why I haven't had anything. Haven't seen anything move over the top of the baits, but that's not unusual. Where you do see the fish is over by the margins over there. That's where they move along there and they jump right out of the water. Nothing there at the moment. Don't never see a lot of bubbling. That's something else that you don't really see a lot of. Um, yeah, it's a funny old lake in that respect. Oh, the joys of fishing! It's absolutely pouring down. Oh dear. Still, it's giving it stopping at six o'clock. Oh, I don't know what it's... Uh, what are we going to do if we get a take in this? Get wet, I suppose. I've had a change of tactics. I'm now fishing more in front of me, you see where that shadow line is there well about there I saw a fish move so I've decided to switch my bait rounds switch my bait round and fish in the open water instead of putting out uh, stringers of PVA I've done some scatter baits, scattered about a couple of dozen baits all around the immediate area. The two markers that I've got are the two pylons over yonder. So the left hand rod is aimed at the left hand pylon and the right hand rod at the right hand pylon and I think I've got the wafter on the right hand rod and the sinking bait on the left hand. We'll see which one produces a take, if any. I'm going for a tactical change 
uh, pop up on the same rig see whether this works they're really starting to get a bit overexcited at the far end of the lake there I'm going to try and capture oh there's one look they're continually jumping out See if he can perform for the camera. I bet he can't. They never do, do they? When you want them to. Come on, it's your opportunity to be recorded on video. Are you going to take it? Let's just hang on for a minute or two. See whether one will jump. Come on, come on then, let's see how high you can jump in the water. I'm still waiting. Come on, you was going crackers a minute ago. Oh well. I've had another tactical change on the left hand rod. I've substituted the running lead for a fixed lead on a lead clip because uh, I had another what looked like a line bite. Just a small twitch and I'm thinking well if the fish had the bait in its mouth a fixed lead would have hooked it. So we'll see. So I've gone for another tactical change which is a, this is my own version here, I've upped the lead size, I've gone for a two and a half ounce lead in a lead clip. I've taken the Matt Collins rig, the mono rig, and shortened it down to four inches and added a five bait stringer because I'm figuring with the fish just picking at those baits it's not going to be moving very far when, when it's got that wafter in its mouth. I've got wafters on both rods so it would be interesting to compare how each performs. Now what I've done is cast my baits at four wraps this time. I have been fishing straight out at six and then um, had some more line bites during the night and brought it in another wrap so I've, the fish that I just caught what I had at five wraps. Well I, I've had line bites at five wraps as well so I'm now fishing at four I think it's a case of finding where these fish are running along parallel to the bank how far out they are and once you can find that out then uh, you can intercept them well it's dawn and uh, there's a very cold 
bitter wind sprung up blowing straight into this bank and oh I've been shivering even in my sleeping bag it's been that cold haven't heard any fish since this wind's turned and chilling the water I guess but hey ho we live in hope there's always a chance well that's more or less the end of the session things have turned a bit horrible weather wise there's a cold wind blowing there's rain showers and I think heavy stuff predicted so I think I'll call it quits at that point it's been quite successful I've had a fish the mono rig caught the fish so that works so that's all positive but I think I need to do another at least another session and uh, compare it to what I have been using a, a, a fixed lead rig see how we get on with that because uh, before I take it to the big lake where the 40 pounders are I want to have absolute confidence in it and I haven't quite got there yet um, so I need, I need to catch one or two fish more so um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time